On to the second last section. This is about reporting how we prioritise results, investigate heterogeneity and assess certainty. So this section is about items four, five and six of the SWIM reporting guidance. So first of all, item four, criteria used to prioritise results for summary and synthesis. So this item says, where applicable, provide the criteria used with supporting justification to select particular studies or a particular study for the main synthesis or to draw conclusions of the synthesis. For this item, it may be that as we're writing up our summary and synthesis, that some studies have more weight or relevance for a review question, and we may want to prioritise those studies over others in the synthesis and conclusions. So if that occurs, what we want to do is we want to be really clear why these studies merit special attention and um, report that really clearly. So it may be uh, according to study design that um, we want to see what R the RCTs amongst our studies said, or it may be due to risk of bias, the studies with low risk of bias, what they said, or it may be that some of the studies had far larger, more robust sample sizes, or it may be that some of the studies, um, the subject of those studies was more directly relevant to the review question that we have. So if we find that there are some studies that we need to, we, we should be really clear on why they merit that extra weight. Item five is about reporting investigation of heterogeneity and reported effects. So this item says, State the methods used to examine heterogeneity and reported effects when it's not possible to undertake a meta-analysis of effect estimates and as extensions to investigate heterogeneity. So in these types of reviews, it's unlikely that we would be able to conduct formal statistical sensitivity analysis. But these reviews tend to have high levels of heterogeneity, and that heterogeneity can be valuable. It can be seen as a strength because the review can incorporate that heterogeneous data and that can lead to more nuanced conclusions. So examining differences across the studies and patterns in the data can lead to useful exploratory analysis. Um, it can be used to refine theory and it can also generate new hypotheses about why the intervention may not always have the same effect. So we want to report clearly what methods we have used if we do examine differences in the in the results um, and we should be clear if they're exploratory or, or informal and uh, one of the simplest most basic ways of doing that is to visually examine tables and we order those tables by modifiers that are relevant to our analysis our uh, review question that might be study design or other characteristics of the studies such as population um, interventions the intervention components or the context and, and setting. Um, and something to think about is that these tables will be very rich in data and they probably would be of more use to the review authors than the readers because they're allowing us as authors to compare the studies in a single comparison to identify patterns in the data. So we should take care not to overwhelm the reader with screeds and screeds of these types of tables, they might be something that um, would be more useful as an online appendix, perhaps. Um, but whatever methods that we use to investigate heterogeneity, we should clearly report what we've done. So as well as the tables, there are graphs that we can use to display the data that will be able, that will be really helpful to spot patterns in the data. So the top slide here is, the top graph here is an example of an effect direction plot. And you can see in one small table, a lot of information has been summarized um, to give an overview of what studies are reporting. So on the left-hand side, the each row indicates a study. There's information such, such as in this case, the studies have been um, ordered by study design and study quality that's relating to risk the risk of bias and on the right hand side the triangles there are indicating the direction of effect of the studies 
And the, the graph underneath is an example of a harvest plot where, again, information from the studies can be set out to, to allow the author and the reader to get an overview of um, any patterns in the data. So now we come on to reporting certainty of the evidence. So this item says, describe the methods used to assess certainty of the synthesis findings. So we want to report how we assess certainty of the evidence and the domains in grade for assessing certainty are to examine the risk of bias, to look at precision, to provide confidence intervals, and also, particularly if that's not available, then we can report the number of studies and the number of participants in that piece of analysis. We can look at consistency of effects across the studies. We can look at how directly our included studies address our review question, and we can examine publication bias. So what we want to do with in this item is clearly report what we have used to assess the certainty. 